Hello guys, welcome to the singleton pattern implementation in C Sharp. Today I'm going to teach you about this pattern. So for the beginning I want to say you that this pattern is basically about one single class which instance will be alive throughout the entire life of the application. So when we first time create it, it will last forever. Of course, it got the bad sides and the good sides. The bad one is that whenever this object gets invalid data or something happens wrong to it, it will be useless till the restart of the application. But the good side of it, the good implementation will be when you need an object that will, for example, handle events throughout the life of the application. So, the perfect example of using singleton pattern is an logger app that we are going cre to create in this video. So here is what this app will look like. We'll have two classes, an calculator and an logger. The calculator will be a class which will be only used for testing purposes, but the logger will have the implementation of the singleton pattern. So let's jump into the code. I've already created a simple console application, so to don't waste your time. And now what we can do is to create our logger class. So we can use the Visual Studio interface and create a class called logger. And here will be the implementation of the singleton pattern. First thing that we need to do is to mark it as sealed. What does it mean? It means that any class cannot inherit from this one. So any inheritance from a logger is impossible. Now we can create our private static field that will be not accessible because we'll inside this field instantiate our object. So we can mark it as static read only and type of logger, maybe with this dash before logger and here now call new logger to instantiate this object at the beginning, at the first initialization of this app, of this constructor. So we also need to have access to this logger so we can create a method also static but now with this public modifier that will return a logger and let's call it simply get logger and inside of it we'll return our logger so we'll all the time return the same object that is created here in this place now it's good time to create the method that we are going to use in this logger so basically the main functionality that will lock the events that has occurred so let's create a method type of void named lock it will take a message with type of string as parameter and inside of it we'll just simply write to the console window the exception that has occurred so console write line an exception occurred and here the message that we have received. So let's create a calculator class. Basically, it will have just one method just to divide the two variables. Let's mark it as public. And here we can call the constructor and inside of it, let's assign the logger that we want to use so let's create a private read-only field with type of logger and in the constructor let's now specify that the logger will be from the static logger class so we can use it like here because it's a static class we can call the method directly we don't need to instantiate this object and the get logger method to return the object that we have created in the logger class or singleton. So now let's create a void method divide 
and this method will take two parameters. Let's quickly call them a and b. And we want to have our result variable. So basically it will be a divided by b. But what will happen if someone specify zero, for example, as the ver b variable? We cannot divide by zero. So let's wrap it in a try catch block. So in the try, we'll copy this code and paste it here. And we can also write the result on the console screen to see, see what we've got. And we can catch an exception that will occur if someone will divide by zero. Let's call it just for exception type exception variable name. And inside of it, we'll use the logger and log the exception that has occurred. Here will be the exception and inside of it, we've got the message. So now when you've got the calculator and the logger finished, we can wrap it up in the mine class, the program class, the mine function. So we can create a new calculator will be a new calculator like here. And let's call the divide function with the zero as B parameter as A we can specify for example five. And at the end let's call the read key to prevent the console window from closing. And let's see what we've got here. And as you can see an exception has been thrown here basically is written that you've tried to divide by zero. So our logger is working. And when it's an singleton, it will be working throughout the entire life of our application. So we succeeded in this project. Thanks for watching and see you next time.